morning everyone i am excited to get started streaming today i have updated my software from chief architect x14 to x15 and i finally got my desk all cleaned and organized and i am ready to go today so my name is rebecca i am an interior designer in montana i work with clients all over the country and i design custom homes so today i am working on a custom home uh, this is one uh, client that is actually my second project with them and they are contractors themselves so they have a pretty good idea of what they want they actually printed out a pretty good layout of what they liked already have some uh, measurements and things like that already drawn into the plans and I am taking their sketches notes all of that and turning it into the actual construction documents um, so we're gonna be making a few changes to the plan from the original we want to square off a few things and change some of the dimensions of things um, and then of course just really paying attention to this one they have a gorgeous view on their property of the mountains in the distance they've got horses um, so we really want to maximize them being able to enjoy the property they have enjoy the views from all levels and one of the coolest features of this house is it actually is three stories um, the third story is a kind of a windows on all side like a parapet um, up at the tippy top so they can see in all directions and there's a small little outdoor deck so that's really the highlight of this home and of course they're building out in the county uh so height is not an issue so super excited to hop in here and uh, i've got my page already set up in chief architect so i'm going to go ahead and start slapping down walls um i always start out with kind of loose dimensions and then you go back around and you kind of tighten everything up um, and this house is going to be a little tricky because it's actually got um some 45 degree angles in it so we've got the main part of the house and then there's these 45 degree wings that go off in either direction so that always makes it a little tricky when trying to guesstimate dimensions on the first go around so there's going to be a lot of back and forth here right now so all righty so got my exterior wall tool and you can't quite see it but off camera here i've got <laughs> what we've got drawn up taped to the wall up here so i can start working off of it um they printed out like massive so all right so we're going to start on kind of the square section um the dining room sort of on the back of the house is roughly 13 by 13 and fairly squared off and then we have the back wall of the great room which is about 19 feet wide then we've got a little bit of a jog big enough for a door so i'm going to guess we're probably about five to six foot right here and so a lot of times when you're working on a plan that doesn't have a lot of dimensions in place you have to use your knowledge or my knowledge of standard sizes for things to figure out how big it's going to be so for example this little jog right here you can't see of course the plan i'm working off of um this is a laundry room and so i can see on the plan that there's cabinets and i know that cabinets are 24 inches deep 24 inches wide so i can guesstimate the length of this wall based on the cabinets that I see in the plan. So now here's where we're gonna go a little, uh, I don't wanna say wonky, but here's where we're gonna start the angles. So over here, we've got the master suite, and this room is labeled as 15 feet wide by 16 feet long. So we're coming out here. Um, fortunately, Chief Architect has the angle snaps, so I know I'm at a 45 degree angle, and I'm gonna drag that out 16 foot. Zoom a little bit, come over. And here we actually wanna go about 15 foot. Um, and then let's see here again there's a bit of a jog um, of about half of that room so we'll say about seven foot ish and then the closet goes out about another seven foot or so probably actually a little more than that but we'll come back to that and then it comes across now if you know me you know I'm not a huge fan of jogs when they're not necessary um so sorry. so i'm good um so i've already squared off one that was in the original drawing for simplicity's sake and then we'll come across here one two three four five six seven yeah probably we'll say ten for now okay and then five that's another seven it's probably about twelve to get back in here yeah and actually that probably does line up pretty close there and then 
this kind of squares off for about a foot. Comes forward. And we're only gonna come forward about four feet, I think. Um, this part's about eight foot. A little beyond that. And this is gonna come over most of, just about, probably about 18. We're gonna come forward, gonna go over again about eight foot. Come back, lined up with that roughly. So you can see what I mean about this having kind of this, this weird wing that jogs off at that 45 degree angle. So we're still looking good. Um, then this little jog comes over here about a foot or so. What did we do over here? We did about one foot eight. 20 to angle a little bit. So, well, we'll leave it like that because we'll, we'll fine tune this. And then the garage here is roughly 28. And then that's going to be probably about 22 here. And again, these, some of these dimensions are based on just what I know average sizes for things are. Um, so I know that my garage is going to have to be approximately 22 feet across if I'm going to have two nine-foot doors with the appropriate two-foot spacing in between. Um, and then I'm going to grab this wall and bring it over. And that's probably just a little less than that. And then there's a jog of about five, four feet. And then another garage stall, say about 14 foot. And actually it's gonna be, I can tell already that's too small. And then 30 foot across. Okay, no, that's about right actually right there. And there we go. Lastly, we just need to connect to this corner of the house. So this, again, is where this angle comes down. And it's wanting to, sometimes, so the, the angle snaps are good to a degree, and then sometimes they get in your way, but you just have to be careful what they're snapping to. And then this wall goes over, what did we say, about three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, and that's how I know this is too small because this actually comes out there because we squared that off. So, ballpark, here we go. Ballpark, this is the shape of the house. Um, and I think we're actually looking pretty good. We're not, we're not too far off in any one direction. So then I use my auto dimension tool and it goes a little crazy there, but that's good. Um, and then we're gonna basically start around and just go around and kind of fine tune some of these dimensions. Um, if you know any, if you know anything about me, you know that especially when it comes to exterior walls, I do not tolerate sixteenths of an inch. Um, in fact, my goal typically is two foot increments. Although obviously in a plan like this, you're not gonna get that. Um, but definitely on an exterior framing, I whole inches at a bare minimum um, because you do not want to make your framing crew mad at you unnecessarily. All right, so, um, and actually I just realized, my 13. I'm kind of going off of interior dimensions, which I really should, no, I was going off. Okay, so I was looking at the interior dimensions and we actually need to probably push out just a little bit on some of these. Um, so for example, this should probably actually be 14 foot. And, okay. So I'm just gonna go around and start fine tuning some of these things. Um, okay, we said this was, and so when you have, and what, why I was just talking about the interior and exterior dimensions is when you have the interior dimensions of a space, and especially when it's a room that's surrounded on all sides by exterior walls, your exterior walls are typically a six and a half inch thickness. So if you have a dining room that's 13 by 13, that's the interior dimension. The exterior dimension 
is actually going to have to be 14 foot by 13 foot 6 to get close um and obviously these are all approximate but um because we're not following this plan exactly we are just using this as the inspiration the kind of the baseline for the finished plan okay so this and i want to make that 20 foot okay here it's not giving me a dimension oh four foot nine there we go I'll make that five foot here i'm guessing six foot here i'm gonna say 16 foot and so i'm just going around and kind of rounding up to the nearest full foot or down in some cases um and then as we start to look at the size of these rooms we'll determine if that actually is the appropriate size for some of these spaces oops always make sure you know which dimension you're clicking on okay Oh, nope, I don't want that one foot seven. I want this one. First we wanna, and so we're going in a circle around the whole thing so that as we're going, we're not changing the dimensions behind us. Because um, otherwise you'd be constantly playing catch up and back and forth and you don't wanna do that. So you just want to systematically go in a circle. Um, I'm trying to look at where some of these things line up. I think we'll do that at 18 foot. And so then here we want some symmetry. So we've got eight foot over here, which means we want eight foot on this side. Um, And then this one I'm just going to manually kind of drag to the right location. Okay. Um, I'm also going to really quick, so this doesn't mess up with my dimensions, I'm going to change this one from an exterior wall to an interior wall, so it's a wall type. I still want it to be six inches, um, at least here in Montana. When you have the wall between the garage and the house, it has to be a rated firewall, which means it needs that two by six framing, not the two by four framing. Um, and insulation and all that so we're gonna change it from an exterior siding six to an interior six so the framing is still the same it just doesn't have that uh, sheathing layer on the one side because we don't need siding in our kitchen and so again I'm going to change this wall here to an interior six and this wall okay so those are the walls that divide my garage from my house and I've gotten rid of that 16 7 sixteenths of an inch framing layer I guess that wasn't the right spot okay yeah that works okay so we're gonna guess let's see that we wanted that one to be 28 foot deep but again that's outside to outside so if you see where your dimensions are it's going to the outside of those walls we won't want to we want to accom accommodate for that wall thickness. And then let's do And let's see here. So one thing I found is that no matter what, whenever you do a project like this, there is always one dimension that ends up being sixteenths of an inch or something screwy and wonky. So Let's go back and double check. Um, here I see that in doing this, I didn't adjust this wall. So that gets me back down to four foot. We'll shift that over, okay. And so now I've gotta go back around this garage wing because I missed that part. And 
So that got to four foot, but this should be two foot. Correct. Okay, so now we can adjust this. And... Okay. So now, if we look at this... So if I change that to 17 foot, then that becomes the wonky one. Or... There we go. So now... Oh, see, and somehow... Okay, so where am I... That dimension I don't care about. Again, we've got something that's just a little bit off here. So let's do 14 foot. Okay, well, an eighth is better than a sixteenth. So there we go. And why is that? I don't care about that dimension. So I am just concerned with. Okay, why is. Oh, I don't need that dimension. So you've always got to look and see where your dimension lines are catching or hitting. Um, and so I'm going to go back in and manually add in a couple of these. Because when you delete, um, when you do the auto dimension, they end up in a string. So if you delete part of it, sometimes it deletes the whole thing. And I'm going to the framing layer, which is the dark gray color. Okay. And then over here. And down here on the front. Okay. So basically, I want to be able to show, as it goes around the perimeter, what are all of these dimensions? And there's always going to be that one corner that just doesn't quite match up. So I like to always put that in one in like the back corner in one little spot where it doesn't throw everything else off. Okay. But those that I don't see anything else that's less than a full foot. So we're going to live with that corner the way that it is. Perfect. So now that we have our basic outline, first I'm going to hit save because, you know, <laughs> I always got to hit save. Um, then I'm going to go start going through. So if we quick look at this, right off the bat, it's saying we're at 2862 square feet. But a big chunk of this is garage. So when I change this to garage, that removes that from that calculation. So my main floor is just over 1,800 square feet on this house. Um, now, fortunately, with this client, I am not watching a super tight square footage budget. So we just want to make this house fit the needs, fit the flow, fit the layout. Um, and whatever size it ends up being, it kind of ends up being. So, um, so we've gone around. We've kind of got that basic perimeter. We squared off one corner in the closet that was stupid um yes i say stupid because sometimes jogs for the sake of jogs is just a waste of money and it's stupid <laughs> so now we want to go through now we've got our exterior 
we want to go through and start getting some of our interior walls and that'll help us to see if we need to make any other changes and right off the bat i'm seeing a couple things like for example this one that walked me over a little ways so now we're going to switch to our interior wall tool Got this that divides here so this area back here is a large mud room and there is a powder room in here as well so we'll maybe do they were originally thinking like this having the powder room sort of in the middle but it might honestly just make sense to have it over the corner so we'll we'll look at the flow of this when we're done and see what we think And now I'm just giving it some basic dimensions, just so we know we're about in the right size. So we're going to do a little powder room. Those are typically five foot by five foot. And then the rest of this is the mud room. Okay. Now the dining room doesn't have any walls around it. This is the kitchen right here. It doesn't have um, any walls except for coming down here. This wall comes across, and then a wall comes up from here, comes over. This wall continues. And in the original plan, I'll wait to add some of this in, but in the original plan, there's actually kind of a some dead space in this section here. There may or may not be a chase, although I don't remember if that lines up with the second floor. does not appear that it does um, so it could just be decorative space that provided symmetry for the great room in which case we'll decide if we want to add that in or not so this right here is I might actually have this kitchen a little deeper than they originally did because the, the way this intersected is a little different. I'm going to square that off for right now and we'll come back to that. Um, then here in the middle we have the great room. This wall extends like this. And then it actually has an angled section. So again, this is where that symmetry is coming in. There's kind of this grand hallway in the front. And then we'll go back in and add in the posts um, and the coffered ceiling detail to really frame out this great room here. But for now, we've got our basic wall wall. And then there's a fireplace on this wall here. Then over here, we have the staircase. So again, for the laundry, we want to guesstimate the size. Um, eight. So that's about where that should line up. And so now this is where I'm noticing a few adjustments. Um, so I'm thinking I might maybe have this dimension off by a little bit or we might just need to address the depth of this foyer and front porch here so this is why you kind of go around and bit by bit add in what you see from the original plan and then make changes as you go now this wall continues pretty much the entire length over here and on the original plan this actually lined up here and here so I'm off by about two feet here it looks like which is not terrible yeah we'll leave it for now okay and then this wall here comes down 
that while there connects. Yeah, I think I do need to push that whole thing that direction a couple feet. So let's do 18 foot and 16 foot. Nope. So now, again, we're kind of running into that issue of the sixteenths of an inch, which I really don't like. So I'm going to make this eight foot. I'm just going around here and Silas, what's happening? Kind of cleaning this up. Yeah, I can do that. Right here. Okay. That made that two foot seven. Okay, so you want to kind of keep just that little bit of symmetry. So we're getting closer here. Um, kind of even that out. Okay. That's getting close, okay. Again, you gotta be careful what you're grabbing. Okay. So that's getting us closer to where we wanna be. All right, and then And this is why I don't like working with angles if I don't have to, but that is okay. All right. Okay, so we're looking closer open. Then this would line up with that. Probably the closet. Okay, I can live with that. Okay, and then, so we've got the bedroom, we've got a closet, and then over here we have toilet room and another closet. This kind of comes across like this. That. That would be roughly like that. Then this is the rest of the master bath. This 
this wall here that comes over here that closes off the laundry room. The wall that comes here. This wall comes up to finish the staircase. And then this wall goes back here. Okay. So again, I feel like this house isn't deep enough front to back. Because this great room here. Okay, right now we're showing 20 feet, including wall thickness. It should be 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Should probably be another two foot forward. Um. So I'm going to take this wall, this wall, this wall, this wall, and this wall. Okay. And... Because we have nice even numbers over there, we have nice even numbers there. I can live with a half of an inch. How deep is that? Should have stayed the same, so. Okay. So at least we have symmetry on the two sides. That depth feels more like what the original showed. I do think three foot three and a half. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Now we're looking around. I've got a couple half inch dimensions. I'm okay with that. I think that got the master suite about where it needs to be. foot there and then right now with that garage not counted we're just about 2,000 square feet on the main floor so we do go up a little bit but I think this actually fits kind of that original a little bit better that on down okay so now Now we can start to go put some doorways in. Okay. 
that's a pocket door going in there this is a hinged door and it is um standard 30 inch door although i think for this one i would like this one to be a little bit larger because this is the entrance to the master suite and this is a forever house so we want to have a sense of things being a little bit more spacious and, and plan ahead for the possibility of if you ever need a walker or a wheelchair in the house um so at least on the main floor i mean obviously we've got a couple more floors but on the main floor at least i'd like to make this as accessible as possible um and whenever possible i also like to make laundry room doors three foot because even though a 30 inch door technically should be able to fit a 30 inch washing machine through it yeah it's tight fit okay so then i'll start labeling the rooms so this room here is laundry And we have master bedroom. Okay. And then we have a closet. Another closet. I'm not going to label the master bath just yet because I want to get the shower in place. And then out here we have a stairwell. And so again, this is where I need to double check and make sure I've accounted for enough depth. Um, I'm gonna use the staircase tool. I'm gonna do a U-shaped stair. I do not want a split landing. Um, I've already got my main floor default set to nine foot ceilings, which is what we want. I always get, okay, there we go. Yes, that is correct. Okay, but we want wider stairs. So we're gonna scooch this on over. Sometimes those auto stair tools in chief drive me nuts. So let's look at this in 3D and see if that's what we want it to look like. Okay, goes up the correct dimensions. But as you can see, it's projecting quite a bit into this walkway. Um, and so this is where we have to bump out a little bit more. Um, so we're going to grab all of that staircase. And then this wall here. We'll start with just a one foot bump. and that's not terrible let's let's check this real quick okay so then oh we want to see if our great room is big enough so we're gonna make sure we get some symmetry here Want to make sure that we have a wide enough walkway there. Label this as great room. It's only telling us that that's 14 feet and we need more than that. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make that six foot. I think that's what was throwing me is the dining room itself is 13 by 13 but because of the way it intersects with the kitchen i was just making the exterior walls that big but i really don't think it needs to be that that way um then that deck is 12 feet so actually i'm gonna make that like that and so then that gets us to the 19 by 17, 20 by 17, that is the great room size. So that gets us where we want to be there. I'm thinking.
to shift all that. So it's telling me that I have walls that aren't quite connecting. Then that, that. Okay. So, what did that do to some of our dimensions here? And I'm just gonna, again, and this is a lot of what feels like a lot of back and forth, but it's just kind of this push-pull of what makes the most sense. How do we get the dimensions for the interior space is what we want. Okay. Line that up. We good there. All right, and again, I do not like seven eighths of an inch. See, they're all just little push-pull, push-pull. And on this side, we have five foot, so we want to make that the same here. No more of that dimension line disappeared, so... And over there, that's actually five foot. So we're trying to keep some symmetry here. Want that to connect to there. Yay, that's starting to line up. Yeah, and I'm getting nice even. Ooh, what that? Ooh, why is that not eight foot? Oh, because it's pulling off of that interior. I want it to connect right to there. There we go. Okay. So now let's connect that. Okay. 
Connect. That. Kind of just zooming in and out all over the place, and I apologize if that makes you seasick, but. <laughs> all right. And then let's pull this over just a little bit. And then we want to make this match up. So I'm going to hold my cursor here so you can see the blue line. Make that symmetrical. Go like that. Let's carry this over. Bring that over. Okay. And now, see, now we're up to 2,100 square feet. All right. But all of our dimensions are nice and even. Okay. We even got this down a quarter of an inch. Yay. Perfect. All right. So, pull that dimension line across. Pull some of these out so they're a little easier to read. So, this corner here is where we have the shower. And again, they had kind of a... Nope. Interior wall. So this is shower. So I'm going to call it bath and then type in the shower. And then what's left here becomes master bath. Okay. So then doors. There is a door here. And again, if we're doing aging in place, I'm going to try and do 36 inch doors on the main floor. Um, so we'll copy and paste. We'll do a door here, do a door here. And although I don't like stealing space from a closet, I think we have to because. Rotate the hinge on that. Okay. So we've got a closet in here. We'll hinge that door a different direction. Okay. Next, we're going to go into our browser. We need to Toilet goes in here. We also need a toilet over here in our powder room. We'll put it right there. Okay. Then I like to use. Um, where is it? This one. So it's the shelf with a closet rod below. And this is a two foot unit. So you can see how that fits around the perimeter of the room. 
And actually with this one, I think we can, except it's a three foot door. I would say we could try and do more behind the door, but actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can't get a full rod behind the door, but we can do, oh, there we go. Sorry, my, with the upgrading of the software comes my toolbars being in different places than they used to be. Okay, so here's where we can do Twelve inch deep shelves. Um, so on two walls of the of the closet, we'll do the standard rod shelf configuration, and this is something that we'll fine tune down the road, either with a cabinet vendor or closet designer, um, or just even the contractor building it out custom. Um, on two walls, we have that flexibility, and then on this wall, we just have floor to ceiling shelves. So things like purses and shoes and whatever else. Okay, then we'll come over here to this other closet and do kind of the same thing. Um, and let's see here, this is the, his closet. And this is the, hers closet. And then we have a, or are we doing a pedestal or a, okay, it is a freestanding tub with a tiled ledge nearby. So, so a pedestal tub. I don't actually like how tight that fits there, so we're gonna scooch it up a ways. Plus, as I said, we wanna have that tiled ledge around it. And then we're gonna get a shower door in here. Shower doors um, off the shelf are 28 inches, so I always shrink that down um, so that my client isn't stuck buying a custom sized door. So we know we've got clearance here, which means we could actually move this over just a little bit more if we wanted, because we want to make sure to give plenty of clearance at that door. And then I'll use my Polyline Solid Tool. Create. A ledge. Um, we're gonna guess about 30 inches and then we'll take a peek at this in 3D and C. I also always update my material. Jesus. Um, to bright white, and then I can add tile to that later. Otherwise, the default is concrete, so we want to get rid of that. Okay, so there's that, and then I'll stretch this so it matches that corner. And then if we look at this in 3D. Now that doesn't look all fancy or anything yet, but it will. That's gonna be cool. Um, so we got the height on that tiled ledge about right, because you want it to be where you can reach over and set your shampoo bottles and things on it. Um, but of course that'll depend on whatever final tub the client ends up picking. Okay. Um, and you can't really see it, but there is glass there. Um, and that's the one, you know what, I actually might change that. Instead of doing the tiled lower half of the wall, I might do that a solid glass wall, because that's the one thing that's kind of obnoxious. I haven't figured this out, and I know there's a way it still wants to stay that. So I'm going to go back and redo that shower. 
slightly different here. First, I'm going to copy that because. All right. So then we'll go to the wall tools. We'll do instead of the straight glass pony wall for the shower, we're going to do straight glass wall. Bring that over. And then put that door back in place. That hinged the way we want. And then we're going to adjust this polyline here. And here, and then we're also going to add in a bench. So we're going to use that same polyline solid tool. We're going to come across the length. We want the bench to be 22 inches deep. 18 inches tall. So now if we look at this in 3D, you can see we've got that raised ledge. We've brought a little bit of that over here where that bench is going to be. And then the rest of this is glass. Um, I'm not really liking that, so I'm actually going to make an adjustment here. I'm going to pull this back to where that bench is. I think that works. And then the other thing I need to do is I've got my tiled ledge, but I want to do a tiled wainscot. Here. Oop. Okay. Gonna pull that down to the door frame. Pull it to the corner. And we're going to drag that actually the length of this. And then drag it like that. Wrap our corner. There we go. Sometimes it gets a little wonky if it if you're trying to wrap too many corners. There we go, and then pull that up and and then the last thing we um we made the tiled ledge thirty inches high. Let's make this forty. And again, change the material. Now, voila. OK. Yay, that's awesome. So now what we can do is we can pick, if we wanted to, we can start picking materials. Um, all tile. OK, and this is one of my defaults that I use because it's kind of a Generic, happy, everyone seems to like it kind of thing. There. 
And so now you can start to see what this is going to look like. Um, and part of the reason I did this shower as a separate room from the rest of the bathroom um, is because we are tiling the ceiling. So that is what that shower is going to look like. And then you've got the door. So this will be a frameless. So the door will come over and down. You can, it's hard to see in this glass. The glass needs to have more opacity. I wonder if, hold on, 3D. So there we go. So there you can really get a better sense of what that glass looks like. Um, you can see it has, um, you know, reflection. And you can see where the sides of those doors are. But we're in a full glass wall. So when this is built, you'll have your door that's 80 inches tall. And then you'll have a panel here that goes all the way up. And then you'll have a panel above here. So there might be a small little hinge clip or something here. Or this might be one continuous panel. Um, that's something that we'll work out with the glass vendor. But that is what that is going to look like. I'm going to switch out of this view because there we go. So you can see that that glass kind of disappeared, but that's okay. All right. But this is going to be a cool master bath. And last but not least, what else does a bathroom need? What is that? It needs vanities. So now vanities for a bathroom are one foot nine. We'll copy and paste. Okay. And I'm thinking. I don't like how crowded that feels by the door, even though it's not, but I would like to work in a linen cabinet. So I'm going to put in a full height cabinet here. And I always make sure to label this linen, because in two dimensions you don't always see the, the difference. Plus, um, Depending on how they print it, you can't always see that color difference. You don't know what that means. So linen, and then we need sink and sink. So there, voila, we have the master bath layout. His and hers closets, a toilet enclosure, um, with the exception of the shower door, all of these access doors are three foot instead of the standard 30 inches uh, to plan for aging in place, which this is the couple's forever home. And that's what we're doing. Okay, so master suite is basically done. Um, we'll come back later and do windows. But for right now, I think we've got the perimeter good. I think the master bath dimensions all work out. So I'm really happy with that space. Next, we'll do laundry real quick. Um, let's see here. Nope. I have laundry. Sorry. There we go. So we have the dryer that I want. This is one feature that I do kind of like with X15 is if you don't have something in the catalog, it is connected, so it knows that you can get that. Um, and then it can download it for you right away. Why does it... Hey, wait, so this is a... called... G F D four five. 
Okay, so I think that's the match. Oh, that doesn't look like the match. It's a dishwasher. I don't want a dishwasher. I want laundry. Why do I not? Okay, well, whatever. I'm just going to do two dryers because I'll figure this out later. So, because they look the same, they're the same size. So we'll scoot that over, and again, we'll give it a couple inches from the door for clearance. That is a little tight, but, I mean, it's not tight. What do you do? Well, let's do this. No, I don't like that. I don't know. I like doing three foot doors, but maybe we'll not. So anyway, we do need, however, cabinets. Let's do cabinet. Cabinet. Take that two foot. Oh, two foot nine. And then we'll just extend that countertop to the corner. And we do need a actually so let's do this. Let's make this the 24 inch one at the longer one. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we've got that part figured out. Now we are over here. We've got the great room. Now this isn't quite symmetrical with the front door. Like it should be. So anyway, we'll figure that out later. One little tiny dead corner, no biggie. Okay, so this is the pantry. And it has cabinets all the way around. And so we're just going around here and adding in cabinets. We'll fine tune the sizes later, but.
and then hmm. honestly I'm not a huge fan of that I think that just feels really crowded So personally, what I would like to do is, I'm going to delete the cabinets on that wall. Actually, hold on. Yeah, we'll do that. And then what we'll do is, Shelves, which I love. Okay, we'll do. And then we'll do partition is 90, top of shelf is 90, and then if we look in the door here, we'll use our multiple repeat tool. I want to get down to, hold on, 16 inches off the floor. Okay. Yay, that looks good. And then we'll do cabinets, wall. And okay, so those are upper cabinets. We'll make our note that this is 12 inch deep shelves. And we'll take that way. And then we want to do a single basin sink here. So that makes that our pantry, and of course we need a door to our pantry. Okay. So then let's a little bit. Okay. So now we need to design our kitchen and dining. So we'll put the little invisible wall over here. Drag it down to here actually. Okay, so this is our dining room. And then we need to marcate this. This is our kitchen. Then 
this is kind of our entry hall. We locate that. There we go. Okay, and then in this house, real quick before I go back to the kitchen, um, we're doing. There's a closet under the stairs here. And then we want our stairs not to be open underneath. And then I'm just going to make the note of the closet. And, oops, I want there to be a break line on this upper section just so that we can see this coat closet under here. So if we look at that, now you can see that that's what that corner looks like. So we have the staircase that still feels pretty open, um, goes up to the second floor. Right now I don't have the second floor so that's got a roof above it or a ceiling above it, but it won't. That's our staircase. And I don't know why some of these walls it defaults to sheetrock, not the pink color I picked, but it doesn't look like much yet, but this is our great room, kitchen, dining, all of that. So Yay! Oh, and one more. Okay. Now, looking back here. Um, oh, I want to do some decorative columns. I kind of like the look of this one. I think this will be a good one for... Is it not? I don't know. I don't know if I like that as much. I mean, those are kind of <laughs> heavy and massive and that might be a little too much. So, let's do more of a like that for now. Even those feel really, really massive. So. Hmm. I don't want a traditional, like, fluted anything. Maybe something more like this. Um, but I think I want this to be more like eight by eight.
That's more about the right. And then we'll just copy this wood for right now. Okay. That is close to what I wanted. So let's pull this arm down. That feels better. Okay, now we will. Cool, okay. So now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna add in our front door. Um, and I'm gonna have to check, I think on my notes, uh, let's see here. Single front door with transom and skylight as opposed to the double front door that originally was here. So we'll do front door. Um, let's go to the library. So I'm just kind of scrolling through the library until I find a door that I think looks cool. And I don't like all those and kind of dated glass panels like that. Although there's... Okay. Let's do that. That's kind of a neat. Okay, so Augustine. We'll do that. Yep. And then next to it... Am I in Thermotru or was I in... I don't even remember now. I don't even remember. Hang on a second. <laughs> Brain fart. Classic craft, okay. Okay, that, that's the right catalog. Aha, that's the one. Yay. And fixed 12. Let's make that 16. There we go. Copy, paste. Mm -hmm. So there we go. And then we also want to have a transom above. Um, I want to change that to a standard glass, though. that I can do this Aha. No, I can't do that Aha. and one more okay 
and then want to do again fixed glass height will do 12 width is 36 46 56 64 but we'll try 66 and see That's right, so. Okay, so I didn't get the transom quite right, but I can mold these three together. It's gonna be 73. Ah, there we go, okay. And And I'm liking that wood finish, actually. I think that might work in this house. There we go. Yay. All right. Okay, so we got our front door in. And... We want lots of light in this house, so we're going to do windows on either side of the door. We're going to go around here. We want, we want a window in that toilet area, probably. Actually, let's do a little window up here. We'll make this one a transom window as well. And I kind of like the idea of a window in here, but we'll make this kind of skinny. And as a result, I'm also going to flip this door hinge. Okay. Um, we'll do a transom window there. And then in the master, we want lots and lots of windows. And then we have a window there, and then a single French door here. So that becomes a glass panel. Okay. Um, and the part that I haven't done is out here on the back, we have um, a porch and a screen porch. So, okay, then we're going to copy this door here. Um, we need to go to the Nano Wall catalog. Okay, so first, we'll just put in a standard sliding door. And then we'll go to our library. And I could have sworn I downloaded that catalog, but. Ah. Okay, so I will have to figure out why that library is not. Hold on, maybe it's.
Okay, so let's see here. Okay, maybe that'll have done it. Let's see here. Because it recognizes it as a thing. Why is that not working? Ah, here we go. We well, that's just colors. Okay, well, anywho. Right now, we'll not worry about that, um, except to make this a 12 foot with, um, there we go. So for right now, that's gonna work. And then we will also put at, And then our dining room needs window, 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 and window, and window, window, door, door. Doorway. Again, we're trying to make our main floor as ADA planning aging in place as possible. Um, so 36 inches on that. Flip that. Okay. I'm not a huge. See here. Let's do this. Because then that way you're not, if this door is open, you're not staring at the toilet. Okay, pedestal sink. What is that? should not be 20, it should be 30. Why did it, okay. Why is that doing that? So that was kind of weird because toilets have to be 15 inches on center from the nearest wall per pretty much any building code ever. And in the old version, this was a 30 inch square block. You couldn't put anything to the side. I'm wondering if something changed in the weird in the library. Um, but if I change this to This is confusing me now. Okay, well. Bounding box. That's, anyway. We're gonna cancel it, we'll leave it for now. I know it's far enough away from the wall, but. Okay, so this, we're gonna call it entry, but it's mudroom. And then this is powder. 
name up where we can read it. This. Okay. And so. I'm going to scoot that over. Flip the hinge. Okay, and then what we've got going here is we want storage space back here for like the muddy horse outside, you know, boots and jackets and whatever that need to hang here. And then over here, this is where kind of the everyday stuff that they wear will line up. And I'm actually going to line this up. I, I think. I think we need that space instead. Let's do three foot. All right. So we've got kind of this nice open space for coming in and out. We've got a nice long wall here for coat hooks and whatnot. So again, I'm gonna use my 3D solid tool Do yeah, it's a uh, we'll say seven. We'll do eight foot. Okay, so and then we'll copy and paste. Oh, I didn't make the depth. Height is eighteen. Height is eighteen. Okay. We've got a lot of space to play with here, so I'm actually going to shift out like that. Because I don't want any of this to feel crowded. Um, so you want to have space to come back here. Okay. So of course, call that the horse entrance. Um, boots and coats. And then this will be Just bench and coat hooks, my standard note. And so this is just a nice, comfortable, good sized space. If guests need to come in and use the powder room, it's there, it's accessible, um, but they've got lots of space for whatever kind of storage they need. Um, and in fact, if they wanted to kind of semi enclose here, they could do like a little closet. Actually, they could probably do that at the end here. So let's shorten that note. Shorten this a little ways. And we're actually gonna do just like a little closet here. Okay, so we have kind of that dirty boot and jackets or whatever else for the horses to come in off of there. We've got a little closet at the back for anything that they need. 
that they don't necessarily want sitting out. Then this becomes kind of still nice open space. And that's still huge. That's still like seven feet across. So I'm going to steal just another couple inches. Like that. Make this a 36 inch door. So we've still got kind of our aging in place going on. There we go. Not going to mess with that anymore. Um, going back to doors, we need garage door. I'm going to do I'm going to make this an 18 footer. Two foot from the corner. So there we go. All right, so we've got our I don't quite like why is that jog Oh yeah, because I did shift that over. I did that. Six or three. Yeah, we don't want to do too much. Though. Okay. So now that, yeah, that still kind of doesn't. So, sorry, I kind of quiet there for a minute, but I need to make this garage just a little bit wider. Actually, let's rotate that here. Shift this. Okay, we'll kind of center that on that ball. And that's kind of cool because it's a little more symmetrical there. And personally, I would do that. Okay. Um, we end up doing out here. It's like, uh, okay, so let's take this back to a nine footer. Put 
that there with two foot. Okay, so we've got the full depth here. Okay, so we're pulling that. 22 foot, and that is still a doable. So this would be like a car, and then this would be the truck. This would also be a truck. So now I've kind of That doesn't need to be quite that wide, so let's Okay. Okay. Yay! I think that's feeling a little bit better. So we have our overall depth of 29, so we can fit a truck in there. We have our shorter depth of 22, so they can fit a smaller vehicle right here. Then they've got the really deep one that's 30 feet deep. What did this dimension end up being? Five foot can scooch in. And so with all these dimension lines, we're really just trying to show um, it just needs to be visible. It needs to be legible. Okay. So if we just do one little thing, twenty eight. Okay. So we like to keep nice even measurements wherever possible. All right, so now I think that's we got our perimeter looking good. I'm happy with the garage dimensions. I think that all fits really well. Now we're basically just here in the kitchen. So we have a tree here let's do okay and then we're gonna do um I want to do um more of like a bar sink because I don't want that really wide I like that one. I like the oblong. There we go. Okay. 
So there we've got kind of our guest bar sink. Then Okay. okay we need to flip that. Okay. Because, sorry, I stopped talking for a minute. We want fridge. Okay, so I'm just kind of adjusting um, these angled walls here, framing the great room in this hallway because I need a little more space. for my fridge to fit here. And then if we're doing the fridge there, that means we need wall cabinet to be 30 inches wide, 24 inches deep. No, 36, aha. And then we also need our partitions on the side to be 90 inches tall, 24 inches deep. That way when we look at our fridge, it's built in. And it looks nice and finished. And when we come this way, There we go. Um, so we need to shorten this window because it's over a sink or over a countertop. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to come out here into the... Where are we at? Yeah, so here we're in the great room. 
looking towards the kitchen. Hello. So here in plan view again, I'm gonna grab our cabinets. Um, we need a wall oven. And that goes down here in this corner. And this template's always been just a little wonky. Um, it really needs to be 90 inches tall to match the rest of the rest of our kitchen. And it's always had a stupid sized toe kick. So there we go, that fixes that. Then we need cabinet, 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 cabinet. And then we want a 36 inch gas range. Um, copy and paste. The one next to the stove should be, yeah, let's do 12 inches. And then we need a range hood. And then wall cabinets. And so we're just lining up our upper cabinets with the cabinets below. If we pull up to our camera, voila, now we have a wall of cabinets. Um, one thing that I always like to do, especially next to a range, is change these to drawers. Yeah. Okay, so now I've copied and pasted. Um, so on either side of the range, I have a 12 inch wide that can be used for spices, utensils, whatever. And then to the side of that, I have a three foot bank of drawers, which is really great for like pots and pans and things like that. Um, we do have the wall oven over there as a secondary. We've got the stove, or the fridge, I mean, um, make the fridge match. And then that little sink over there is just kind of a secondary, like a bar sink or um, coffee maker sink. I'm gonna move the kitchen label out of the way. And then we wanna do our island. And we want cabinet sink dishwasher, pretty straightforward. So then double sink.
All right. And then I'm hello. Let's see here. Um I'm not quite liking the size of this kitchen with this island here. So I think I am going to shrink this wall back another little bit. like that a little bit wider okay so that fills up that wall better let's check our measurements here here and there now for that one you'll notice i measured to the 24 inch deep cabinet not the fridge but i'll adjust for that here shortly so i want to catch all three of my pieces here I want this to be minimum of four foot six, although I might push it to five. I like that we have four foot here. I'm going to drop this to three foot nine. And I think just to fit the scale of this kitchen, this will need to be five foot. Um, that's the most I ever like to have the island away from the perimeter. But in this case, because you have your range and your sink back to back or butt to butt, um, I think that makes sense. And then we have the extra space here because even though this is for the cabinet, the fridge most likely will stick out a little extra. So we'll delete those for now. Those are just kind of temporary. And then we actually want this island to be quite a bit bigger. I'm going to do that. Rotate that way. Need a dishwasher. I just need basic dishwasher. There we go. Perfect. And then I will do my pony wall right here. Okay, and with my cabinet tools, I'll add my custom countertop. Nope, wrong direction. Okay. And then we need that to be... I want to make a 16 inch overhang. Okay. So that... For the size of space that we have there... Is a very nice island. That island is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven foot by like five and a half. So we might end up having to actually, you know what? I think I will shrink this just a little bit. Let's make that like 18 inches. Um, Because once you start to get to that um, width, you run into issues with finding a slab the right size sometimes. So there's our island, and then if we pull up our view, match our wall color. Okay. And then throw that open. And there you can see our pantry. And we need a window over that sink. Okay. So let's go back out around the house one more time here. 
We don't need any more windows in there. We've got the nice little one here. This will be coming in. We need coat hooks. We need wall space for that. Got all those garage doors. We, if we decide to add anything decorative window, we can, but we don't need anything right there. Got our kitchen. Got that flanking that. Probably want to put a window in the staircase, but actually, you know what? We'll wait to do that till we get the second floor built. That way we can position that properly. Okay, now we need, in the great room, we need a fireplace. And we are doing a gas insert, I believe. the one I usually use. Still getting used to the new menu layout. Let's position that. So there's our fireplace. Um, this template, I always end up having to adding in this piece. Too deep. There we go. And then blah, blah, blah. That's what I was looking for. Okay. There's our fireplace. And now we need to do our covered deck and screen porch. So first we'll do a railing out here. Flip the layer so that the siding is on the correct side. Um, match that up. And then this, okay, so this becomes green porch. And this is deck. One second here. So then outside 
on that back, the connection between the veranda and the screen porch. We have double-sided wood burning fireplace. So we need to take a peek at this, see what this looks like. Interesting. All right. So there we go. And then let's see, can you make that tall? Yeah, there we go. All right. So we need to do a couple things. We need to get our siding on here. And then I've had a lot of people asking for screen porches lately. Um, and the best way that I've found show them see this door there yeah so we're going to copy and paste this door here we need to flip the hinge this door is going to be you want to get rid of the lights okay. um, oh we want to change the material in the door so instead of the glass I want to use this architectural mesh because I've tried using like a screen material and it just doesn't look right um, in 3D. And this gets the point across pretty well. Um, not 12 foot 12. And then I'll copy and paste. But this time I want it to be fixed. Instead of glass panel, it's just, no. Lab, but then I'm also going to go back to the materials. Hold on. I don't remember how I did this. Okay. There we go. That's that fixed. And then this is the screen door, so this one has to have that. Okay. So now inside here, first let's go back to the plan view. We want to make the panels big enough that they fill up the majority of the wall without having a lot of dividers in between because that's how screen porches are done. So let's try to make this um, a 42 inch panel. Now that we 
use too much space. So we need to make the ones on this side a little smaller. There we go. And try. You want there to be a screen panel there, so I think this ends up being about right. And this is one of those things where it's a little weird at first because um, when it's a glass door, it knows it's a glass door, and so when you need to make it glass, it makes it all glass right away. Whereas this one, you have to do both the inside and the outside as that mesh sometimes separately. It's a little trickier. Okay, so that is looking more like a screen porch, but I also want to match my siding. And I always just show siding on the inside of the screen porch too. Whatever they choose to do as sheathing, that's a decision they can do later. And then I'm just going to make all my trim match. I can and So then that's the interior of my screen porch. Okay, so from the outside, that's what that looks like. Oh man, I got a bunch of wonky siding over here. Spin this one more time, make sure. All right, so everything on the outside looks good. We've got our screen porch, we've got our deck. Um, we'll do a like probably three stairs. And I want to do one. I want to lock the top and I want my top tread to be zero. Top height is zero. There we go. So that created what I needed my stairs. Perfect. So that what that looks like from the inside. Um in this area here, I believe that's I'll look at the second floor plan. Yeah. So that is not a two height double height ceiling. That is a room up above. So this will have a coffered ceiling. We'll go back in and add those details later once we know for sure that the plan is exactly what we want. So, great room, got the fireplace in there. Um, I do want to real quick put just a tiny bit of furniture in here. I don't do furniture a lot super early on, except when I'm trying to really see what this uh, layout is going to look like with the fireplace on this wall and the view out the back because we want to take advantage of that 
and still be able to enjoy the fireplace and enjoy, I'm assuming they'll have a TV above there. So let's see here. Let's do... Bless you. Okay, and it probably didn't. Every once in a while it's catching a little snippet, but not, like every once in a while it's doing the little thing, but it's not consistent as you talk. Okay. All right, so I'm just waiting for that catalog to download, that sectional. Because uh, I want to put a sofa in here. I want to make it enjoyable and relaxing for that. And then I'll probably do like some swivel chairs over on this side because then that way they can be part of this grouping or they can rotate out. Okay, cool. All right. And I'm going to but I want to mirror this. That way. There we go. And so what I like about this is that you still have most of the seats kind of facing out the window for the view. You've got that chaise. Oh, I don't know. This is a tough one. Let's mirror it back that way. Turn it this way. And then let's see here, swivel chair. Hmm. Well, we'll just do armchair, and then I will recommend to my client that they search for a chair that swivels. So, like, for example, something like this. And that one's a little big for the space, but it's kind of shows what could fit. So as you come in the front door, that's what you see. When you're sitting here, I think we need to shift this like that. And then this can be a wall for whatever kind of, maybe a console table of some sort. Yeah. I didn't really square up my windows, so let's do that real quick.
Alright. Windows kind of all nice and square. And then this one. And then we don't have any windows over there. Perfect. So I think at that point now our main floor is done. Why is it saying that I there we go. Okay. Yay, voila dimension. So Yay, that is our main floor. It's awesome. All right, so two and a half hours to get the main floor done, but after this, the rest of it should go a lot faster because the upper floors are a little bit easier and we already have the footprint for the main floor. Um, we came in at 2,141 square feet. Do I have a porch? Yes, I do have a front porch. Haha. I should throw that on here real quick. We'll do this. We'll do two foot. Come out here and do that. And then, so we'll call this porch. And I'm gonna copy these stairs from the back. Perfect. So, and granted there's no roof, there's no second or third floor on this yet, but that is the beginning. Of what this house is going to look like. So, all right, cool. We hit save again. So now we've got the main floor done. We're going to go up and build the second floor. And let's see here where I put that. Now I have my second floor plans up on the wall so I can see what I'm doing there. Let's see here. Um, we got our main floor. Our main floor had our ceiling height set at nine foot, which is what we wanted. We are going to the second floor here. Um, and if we hit the F9 button, we see our lines for the room for below. So I'm going to go around the perimeter and copy the walls that matter for this second floor space. Oh, there is an open to below. I kind of spaced that. I think in there. Oh, well, we're good. All right. That's why you always look at your plans and don't assume you remember everything. <laughs> check your notes. Check your plans. Okay. So we want this room open to below. 
we're gonna copy this we're gonna copy this over here we're gonna come across here and some of this is gonna be kind of like attic storage so we're not too worried about what this looks like Right now, I'm just kind of tracing real quick. Oh, and we actually, on the second floor, we have the loft coming over the porch like this. Aha. And again, we'll clean up all this here in a little bit. So this comes back. And then we have a suite that extends out over this garage like that oh, not that much goes that way that way that way and like that so there now we have our basic second floor um the red lines like i said are what's happening down below so now i'm going to go around the perimeter and start lining these up um you'll see at the bottom of my screen there's a button for a line with below if that button is not there in theory that means it's already aligned with below but i always like to double check because i'm picky like that sometimes um so if i click on it and there's that button does not appear i'll actually bump it out of position just to make sure because I don't like to assume that it's connecting to the correct thing. So I do use the tool, but I always double check it to be safe. <laughs> uh, all right. And then that should be about there. And then so some of these, I'll be making the, the judgment call as far as like what size these need to end up being or what they need to align with. Um, like for example, there, there's a wall down here. We'll align that there and we'll probably align this with that so um and these will actually be kind of like under the roof line so i mean they're technically exterior walls but they're not going to have siding on them they're just the dividing line between the house and the attic okay so then we'll continue to go around here Double check and making sure that everything's in alignment. Um, now this, we get to decide what number that is. Um, that. But then this suite here, we want it to be kind of centered. So we're gonna come in. Let's see, let's say that is only about 14 feet wide. So let's go back a little ways. And then we'll bring this in a little ways. That well. So when you're doing dimension lines, you got to be a little careful because um, it depends on which act, which line is active, that will determine which line moves. Which seems pretty obvious when you say it out loud, but still something you ought to always pay attention to. Okay, that's 18. I want to make it exactly 18. This exactly 15. Okay. And then that one lines up, that one lines up, and then that one we get to choose, but it's kind of based on this corner. All right, so again, we'll do our auto dimension lines just to double check, make sure we don't have anything. Oh, look, we have a gajillion sixteenths of an inch. Ha ha. We don't like that. So. So why Okay. 
And that's where porch railings are always kind of a little wonky. Okay, that's decent. All right, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. That's fine. So, on the second floor, we can't really help some of these. Um, there we go. So, I'm actually going to go in and delete a bunch of these now because they're kind of crossing in my way. But we've cleaned up the outside. We've made sure everything's aligned with below. Um, good. Perfect. Now we can turn. Oh, wait, no. Before we do that, real quick, we want to get our stairwell. Now, on the second floor, we have comes up and there it goes up again. So we're actually going to copy this staircase. Copy, go up a floor, paste. Um, so we have a loft, we want this wall to line up here, and then we want railing here, and then we need invisible wall there. And before we do anything else, we need to specify this room as open to below. No label, because that creates our stairwell. And so if we look at this before where I had that ceiling that kind of got in the way, it is no longer there because now we have open to above staircase. Um, now on this staircase, however, the one thing I just noticed, um, the main floor staircase, we wanted the style to be um, open, uh, not open underneath because we wanted a closet down there. On this one though, we do need it open to underneath because <coughs> we have the staircase below. And so again, touch up some of these paint colors. stairs and then so we go to the main floor to the second floor and then from the second floor there's also a third floor this is where we want to do maybe a window but we want to drop it down a ways let's do negative 24 which brings us to about the right height for that stairwell and then we'll probably do a second window going up higher okay so we've got open staircase railing figure that part out okay so now over here we have oh wait we need to do one more thing we have this and that that aligns with below This aligns with below. We're going to have a railing. And then we're going to go back to a wall. Okay. And you'll see how, even though, so when it aligned with below, it wanted to be slightly off center from that corner. That's because the wall below is a two by six wall. This is a two by four wall. So we want it to align so that it's a smooth transition along the great room. Um, I believe when we look at that, you'll see. Yeah. 
um, we want to change this here to say open to below. Oops, not all of that. We're not ready for that yet. Wall, wall. We get all our walls in place first. Okay, that connects. That connects. Yes, so now this is open to below. And on this one, we will leave the label so that you know what you're looking at. If we're up here on the balcony, we look out, we can see that, and we can look down. Yay! Um, and we'll have to look at the exterior a little bit and figure out because we are absolutely going to want windows on this wall up here. Let's see now we're starting to get our second floor. And see how that roof line is going to come in and that's going to be kind of like a room under the eaves. There's our front porch. There's our stairs going up to the third floor. All right, so we'll turn off the annoying red lines. And again, we're going to kind of start going around and adding in what needs to be added in. Um, so we'll throw a wall here. On a dimension line. Okay, so here we are creating a little powder room. Okay. And we have storage into the attic. Again, I'm going to make this a 36 inch door because as anyone who's ever done, tried to carry boxes up to the attic before knows, you want space. You want to not be bumping your elbows. Um, and I think we decided this is actually the mechanical room. Or well, yeah, mechanical, sorry. This is mechanical right here. So again, that 36 inch door makes a lot of sense. We'll switch the hinge direction and then I'm going to make a note here. Um, possible attic storage out here once we get the um, the roof line on we'll know how much space but if you look here we've got the space above the master bedroom and the, the bathroom so we could very easily under that roof line at the very least this section right here um, have some attic storage so okay so we've got our mechanical room up there. Um, and we have to have our mechanical room upstairs because A, we don't have room on the main floor, and B, we're doing slab on grade because of the high water table. So we can't put that downstairs. Um, I'm all for working smarter, not harder. So I'm gonna copy and paste my powder room from down below. Although, swap. So this is powder. And then we're going to do a linen cabinet right here. So let's see. We've got our powder room. And 
we may or may not be able to get a window in there just because of the roof line of this screen porch down below so we'll have to wait and see um we'll be putting some windows in up here of course we definitely want to do windows all along the front here Um, and then over here, we've got And I'm calling these like suites, but suite three doesn't actually have its own bathroom. So that's okay. Um, oh, because suite three is going to become the exercise room. So. And again, exercise room, I'm going to make the door 36 inch instead of a 30 inch door. So that way it's going to make it easier in the future when we need to bring in the exercise equipment. They're also going to have, I guess, an infrared sauna in this room. Um, so when you're bringing in that equipment, it's nice to have the extra door. So we'll call this family, but we're going to label it. Okay. Okay. This is just a little pocket office. Very small pocket office, but it'll work. It will also have a window in the front. Try to sneak a window there. So then we'll use our dimension tools to make sure that we have decent hallway width. And four foot eight's not bad. Over here we need Hmm. Always pay attention to what wall you're touching, what dimension you're touching, because otherwise you end up moving the wrong thing. Okay. I don't, I'm not liking that, but we'll figure it out. But we can't make the office any smaller. <laughs> um, why does it say it's 19 by 14? Like, that is so not true. Okay, well, I'll figure that part out. So we've got the exercise room. There will be a in 
infrared sauna over here. And then we need a closet and a bathroom over here. Okay, so this is bedroom two. And pretty much anywhere we've got the space, I'm just gonna keep doing the 36 inch interior doors. Um, and then if we decide we don't need them, we don't need them, so, okay. But that way we've got them for aging in place. All right, so this. Okay, so we need to square up that corner. We need to not square up this corner. We need, what do we need? Okay. A lot of space here. Yeah, I don't think we need all that space. So we'll suck that in. Okay, this needs to be over here. And then we'll do Bath vanity. door here and then we need well that was just a shower okay And this closet doesn't need to be this big. Okay. So this then is the bath or suite two, so we're gonna call it bath two. Closet. Here. 
And then bifold. Getting quiet, I probably need more caffeine. Okay, so we've got a closet for that. What did I do? This bedroom three. Oh, I switched to electrical. Why did I do that? All right, anyway, I'm in bedroom three now, which is huge also. Because it comes all the way to the front there. Got rid of that, we got rid of that. All right. I'll leave it that size for now, but we might change that later. Okay, so now I need a shower. And That's what we're doing. We need a longer vanity, so let's do this. We'll reverse this. And fill in some cabinetry here. And then the door into there. Perfect. And this is bath three because it connects to bedroom three. Okay. And the original plan had this kind of like hallway door divider thing. So out here you have the loft. Family bits. Okay. And then there's a little hall, there's the exercise, the bedrooms, the bathrooms. That all fits. Okay, we'll do window, window. Window, 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 window. And then we definitely need to do windows here, but these are going to be fixed size. Make the two in the middle bigger. We'll make these like 42. And then let's see here. Okay. We're just kind of guessing, but we want to line that up with what's below. And. Kind of a nice even spacing of that. Save. And hello if you're here. Sorry, I'm not showing my face today. I'm simulcasting here on Twitch as well, so I've got my other camera set up for that. 
All right, so this is that floor. Um, let's real quick just clean up some of our window measurements. And basically when in doubt, I like nice even numbers and then I can always go back and change these things later. But I like to start out with Check those, ready, check those. This. And then we already did those. And we already did that one. Okay. So we've got that stuff done. Now we need to build another floor. Build floor. Um, we're gonna do a blank because we don't need very much of this at this point. Um Eight foot, awesome. We'll hit OK. We're gonna hit F9 so we can see what we got here. And then I need to grab one more of my drawings. So now I've got that all pinned up on the wall so I can see what I got. This one, the client found a plan they really liked, made a bunch of changes themselves, they're contractors, so they kind of know what, what to do. Printed it out on nice big paper, so yay, I have something to work off of. And now I have. So, all right, caffeine up. And really, we're just working with this one little section right here for the final section okay so we're going to grab our exterior wall tool again we're going to enclose the staircase and we're just kind of copying here we're going to shoot across here all of this over to here um and i'm thinking i'm actually going to do it to here because i know that wall goes all the way down both floors come across here and here okay so now we need to double check that we are aligned with below on all of these exterior walls um, okay and then we want to pick our dimensions over here. So we're going to grab our dimension tool. I make them straight lines. There we go. So we want this upstairs room to be about 13 feet across, which it is. Um, let's do six foot six. And let's have that be four foot. And if we go down a couple floors, we do want to double check. We're kind of looking at this location of the fireplace two floors down because we've got a flue that's going to go all the way up. So we are within that, that flu will go outside. So we're out of the way of that. Um, and then we want balcony. Okay. So up here we have deck. There's no roof over it. Okay. And then here, I'm gonna connect that, yep. We want this to be an interior six to line up with below. There we go. Oh no, never mind. We want the never mind. 
You do want that to be a four. Do not show. Okay. All right. So then we want a railing. Okay. So down here it comes up and up, which means here we want a railing. And here we want room divider invisible because this now is our stairwell down. So it's open to below. We're not going to show the label because this will allow the staircase to show up. Voila. This is our landing. So we'll just call it all. And then this. I'm just going to pick family room, but this is called the Eagle's Nest. Yay. Okay. And for this, there's not too much else we're adding to this. Um, we need a door. And we want this to be a pocket door. With the pocket going the other direction, yep. Um, we need a sliding door on this wall. Let's see if I can get a six foot. Oh yes, I can, good. Okay, that's a sliding door. Um, then we want just a couple little cabinets here. We want a sink and an under cabinet fridge. Here, if I move this over. One more base cabinet in here. Okay. Okay. And actually, I'm going to delete that cabinet. We're going to look for beverage fridge. Okay, we're going to look for wine. Mini fridge, no. Um, I know there's one used it before. Oop, there we go. And then we'll have to use our custom countertop tool. Okay, and then we want our skinny little oblong sink. This one here in the corner. So we have an under cabinet beverage fridge, a little cabinet for whatever storage, and the sink. And then over here in the corner, we want to do a let's do corner fireplace. Okay, so I'm going to turn off what's below. And then I am going to really quick just steal Windows, copy, paste. Okay. There we 
go. Um, now we need another window in the stairwell. So and actually, I'm going to make that a little bigger. And I'm going to do a couple there. Let's go to our exterior view and see what this looks like. Well, yippee skippy, this is going to be fun to put a roof on. <laughs> uh, but. This is a cool looking house. It will be. Look at all those windows. Oh man. All right. Um, let's get our siding. Okay. And let's see here. Yeah, this is the house. So I'm going to hit save. And just for fun, I want to see what Chief is going to do as a roof. I'm going to change my pitch to a six. And let's see. So this is where then I get to go back and do some kind of fun stuff with bring some gables in here and really making this look gorgeous. Um because the floor plan's done. Okay, so I'm gonna, this at least helps me figure out kind of my basic roof lines. Um, I don't like, I obviously don't like some of this. Um, I'm gonna want my upper floor to lower a little bit and then come down and maybe connect. I definitely don't like that gable going back or that hip going back. I think we're going to lose this window because I think we just want to connect all that down. Um, that needs to be a gable, which means. Unless that's a shed. Ooh, that could be a cool shed. So that could be a cool shed going back, um, which means that I don't have to worry about these windows because right now that with that going up like that, it gets in the way. But if I do that as a shed, and I can keep those. Um, the ones on this end I might have to shorten. And I'm going to have to go back and look at the original and see what it had for gables. So I think I'm going to have to gable this end and maybe this. And if I gable here, I'm probably going to want to do something with this. We want this to be open. We don't want that covered. And again, here, I think I need to do something with the shed here. What is going on there? Huh, even Chief's roof didn't get that quite right. Um, I think I can keep that pretty simple. And then I'll just adjust the spacing on those windows for that to look right. Overall, I'm not unimpressed. Because <laughs> for me to do that math on all this would not be fun. So I want to see if I can find the email. Let's see. This is going to be fun. So anywho, all right, well, I think that's about where I'm going to wrap it up for today. I'm going to fudge with this roof later, but at least I got the plan 
about where we want it to be. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in. Um, sorry if I kind of wandered off and forgot to talk for a little while, but hopefully you enjoyed the stream and uh, we'll uh, condense this three and a half hour video down later. So try to pull out some highlights for you. But thank you so much for tuning in. If you don't already follow me on Switch, on YouTube, on TikTok, on all of the socials, please do. Revision Custom Home Design. I am a custom home designer living in Montana, working with clients all over the country. So have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon.